Okay, for your next assignment, the new discovery speech, you have to prepare an outline. In uh, the next couple of chapters we're working on, chapter 3 as well as chapter 4, there's more information on how to build the outline. But I figured that I could also show you an example from a student so that you would see what um, I'm looking for. We're going to talk about MLA and APA on a different recording. This one, we're only going to concentrate on a proper outline. But I'm still going to mention a couple of things. So, for example, the student has created his outline in an MLA format, right? So this is the header of the MLA format. So technically, everybody else, whether you're using MLA or APA, you're all going to start with that title right here. Okay, so the first line is the title of your speech. And it's important that you try to use a complete sentence. Right now, Chris has typed a title, but he did not use appropriate um, capitalization. Now you can do this with Word. Um, if you have a problem with knowing how to properly capitalize title, let me know, and I could have a quick write-up prepared for you. So the best is to have the title of your document, and the second line should be, what is this document? So the title of a speech, the life-changing discovery of the new and improved Lion battery, and what what speech is it, or what document is it? Now, he made a um, mistake by calling it a proposal. That is a mistake, and it should be called an outline. Okay, he didn't do that on purpose, but his formatting was perfect, so this is why I'm reusing this. So this right here, you would change that for the word outline. And because the first outline you submit is a draft outline, you should probably call it draft outline. Okay, and then for the final version, you should also call it uh, call it appropriate. What happens is that since this is a communication class, you really want to try to be as precise as possible with your words so that no one is confused when you hand them work. They know exactly what it is, what it's for. All right, next, you will need a purpose statement. The purpose statement is what we call thesis for a speech, right? So the thesis tells us what exactly, what's the main reason why um, you're giving that speech. And if you try to have a complete sentence, reusing some of the um, statements that you've made in your proposal, that's going to help you, guide you uh, into discovering, hmm, what's the best uh, purpose statement that I could use for this speech? For instance, right now, he says, to inform my audience um, about who discovered and created the new Li-Ion battery new addition changes and how it will affect everyday life. So he tells you exactly the impact he wants to, uh, he wants to, his speech to have on um, the audience member. All right, so if we continue, uh, by the way, you can see a basic, super basic example, chapter 3 and page 46. But if you go just a little bit further in Chapter 4, they start talking about the organizi organization of outline starting on page 52 of your book. Okay. So first thing is you have to remember that you need to divide your speech into three parts. So the first part is introduction, right? And that would be Roman numeral 1. The second part is body, Roman numeral two. And the last part is conclusion, 
and that would be Roman numeral three. Okay, so you have these three major parts of your speech, and within these three major parts, you're going to have different elements. So let me scroll back up. In introduction, you need to have an attention getter. An attention getter um, is detailed on page, um, let me see right here, in chapter 4, page 59. Okay, they tell you on page 59 that you can use things like audience question, an anecdote, a startling statement, or a statistic. So, for example, you could ask um, your audience, are you guys aware that um, there's a new type of battery that's been created, you know, something like this? Or if it's an anecdote, it could be, well, the other day I was trying to use a gadget of mine, but um, it wouldn't work because the battery went dead, and I feel like I have to replace those batteries on a regular basis. So that's an anecdote. That's something that happened to you in real life. And um, you're using this in your speech. A startling statement or statistic would be letting people know an information that they were completely unaware of, and that's also taking them by surprise. Okay, hypothetical situation goes without explanation. Quotation is what um, our friend is using right now, the Herbert Hoover quote. Or you could start with a joke. Now, you have to remember that obviously the attention getter you're going to pick has to be appropriate and relevant to uh, the topic at hand. After your introduction, I want you to preview the main points that you're going to tackle in your speech. So you should have determined that beforehand. And that's where the proposal is also going to help you, right? Because the proposal is going to tell us um, what it is that you're going to talk about, why you're talking about it, why do you think it's important for us to listen to it? Where did you get th this information f uh, the first time? Where did you start looking for it? And things to that effect. So you already have a basis for how and the how and the why. Okay, so for him, what he wants to talk about right now is who did the research at USC, okay, to have developed the battery design. He wants to mention new addition and changes um, that this battery, this new battery, is bringing to what we already know, and how will this affect our everyday lives. Now he's picked three main points, and um, I always suggest to, st to students to pick three main points. No matter h how long your speech is, you should concentrate on three to four maximum, and four is a lot, especially for a speech of that length. So. Um, now he's already done his introduction, right? This introduction tells your audience member what's coming up and why they should pay attention and why it's relevant to them. Um, that's what you're trying to tackle. Now in the body, that is the heart of the speech, which should be about 75% of your speech. So you say more or less. Let's say we round it to something easy to calculate. 70% the body, 15% for the intro, 15% the remainder, 15% um, for your conclusion. So that should be, you know, the guideline and really general guideline that you want to keep in mind as you are building your speech. Now, for the body, the main point that you're going to address are the ones you already told your audience you are going to talk about. So the first one that says, I want to talk to you about the researchers, and that is indeed what you had said that you would start with. Okay? And for each of these main points, there's going to be some sub points. Right? So because you develop it, that's how you want to think about it. So his main point one matches this one. His main point two has to do with addition and changes. And there you go for my next main point. And see how he's living, leaving rather crumbs for the audience to follow. 
you know that you are at the first main point and because he lets you know right here for my first main point and then when he moves on to the second point he lets you know this that he's moved on to the next one so you're not completely lost especially for a discovery speech where everything is brand new and when he moves to his third main point he's letting you know that it's his last one okay and in between each point he is using transition transitions are like a bridge that ties one point to the next or one line to the next okay so for each of these you can see that he is expanding on these points with even more information okay and now moving on to the third part of the speech the conclusion when you are working on your speech you really should not touch your introduction until you're done with your body the body is going to lead you to the conclusion and once you know how you've ended then you'll have a better idea how you started because let's face it right when you begin the speech you don't know exactly how the main points will be developed so it makes sense to develop them first and then go back and introduce them the way they were developed so let me go back to conclusion as we're doing the conclusion there's a couple of elements you want to remember first you want to um, confirm that yes that is what I talked about so you're going to recap you know restate your purpose statement and then recap the main point that first you talked about the research team and additions changes to the battery and how uh, that particular discovery is going to affect our everyday lives and then after that you're going to have a quote right or a final thought and you ask them if they have any questions you thank them for listening this closes the loop and lets your audience know that you're done and it's the end of your speech attached to this please make sure that you have work cited if you're writing an MLA paper or a uh, references if you're writing an APA paper okay and we're going to talk on a different recording on how to do this because I have a very good tool um, that's going to help you with this it's called citationmachine.net um, if you want to write down that URL and you can just post information in it just the way you they ask you and boom it comes up with perfect citation prepared for you okay so these are the main parts the most important elements of writing a speech in communication these three parts the introduction the body and the conclusion are referred as tell them what you're going to talk about the introduction talk about it the body tell them what you just talked about the conclusion alright let me know if you have any questions and thank you for listening